Hey Hey guys, welcome to Split. Today I'm looking at a drone that pretty much anyone can fly because it flies itself, literally. It's the DJI Neo and it could be the one. Matrix pun not intended. A lot of people have talked about flying drones or even trying out FPV flying, but spending all that cash on gear and then learning the skill curve may be a barrier for most. Drones like the DJI Neo are trying to lower that barrier considerably. The Neo, a small FPV compatible drone that has AI features, allows you to fly with anything you own, even if you don't own anything. In the box, you get the drone with the battery already installed, a charging cable, reading materials, and stickers. Stickers are very important. Apple's been taking out stickers from this stuff, so I'm just being a child. From a design standpoint, this thing is small. It weighs only 135 grams. It has guarded propellers to protect the blades from the inevitable crash because it does not have obstacle sensors at the back of the drone, unlike the other more expensive drones. This one has basically landing sensors, but after that, that's it. It has a 4K camera. Uh, the functions are managed conveniently at the top of the drone. It has a USB-C port for charging and data transfer. And yes, there is no SD card slot, as you can see here, because it has an internal storage of 22 gigabytes, which can hold up to 40 minutes of 4K at 30 FPS video, which is not bad. Also, unlike most DJI drones that typically have a three axis gimbal for stabilization of the camera, this has a single axis mechanism. The horizontal stabilization is done electronically and it works pretty well, even in super windy conditions. Back to accessibility. Like I said earlier, this drone, anyone can fly it, even if you have nothing, no remote, no cell phone, whatever. All you have to do is go to the top, select one of the six modes, hold the button down for three seconds, and it takes off. It does exactly what it says in the mode. It has follow mode, which flies the drone behind you and tracks you. It has a droney, which pans out, pans in. Circle, which is pretty much what it says in the word. Circle, goes, goes around in a circle. Rocket shoots straight up into the sky, comes back down, focus, keeps you focused, but the drone won't follow. So it, it's pretty much just hovering in space in one spot. And then direction track where the drone is following you from the front in the direction you're walking towards. Another option, if you do want to control this thing, you can fly it with your cell phone. Just pair it up with the DJI app, limited Wi-Fi connection, use on-screen controls, and boom, you can fly it like a regular drone. If you're a bit more professional or have some experience with drones, and you already have equipment at home, like the RN3 or RN2 remote, you can pair this with the DJI Neo. Even the motion controller will pair. So like I said, anything in that family, almost anything will fly. No controller with controller, no cell phone with cell phone. You are good to go. It supports full manual flight. DJI Goggles 3 can also be linked in for the real FPV enthusiasts, and it can do a top speed of 17.9 miles per hour, which is pretty decent. Okay, not crazy speeds you would get from the FPV pros who can do over 100 miles an hour. But again, if you're just starting out, nobody's flying at 100 miles an hour and to destroy those things and spend all that cash. This will do for most, is what I'm saying. DJI has released a couple of updates that make this drone even better, especially two of them that have been complained about quite a bit. The first one is the ability to shoot vertical videos. That's right. If you're living in social media or you're a blogger that is all about that vertical format, it didn't have that originally. It's there now. You can shoot it. Might not be up to 4K, but it will do 1080p up to 60 frames per second, which is more than enough, I think, in my humble opinion, for social media. The second major thing they fixed is I did complain about it tracking not being perfect. The faster you go, it could get lost. DJI has spruced that up. So this thing is able to fly up to 32 kilometers per hour in track mode, and it'll keep up with cyclists. And if you're running super fast, However, you cannot access this top speed when you're flying in manual mode. I suspect in a future update, they will let us handle that. But right now, it's only available in the tracking mode. Also, you got to update the drone and the app on the phone to get this new features. There you go. DJI even included a mic feature that allows you record audio, like when you're doing the directional track and the footage is in sync with the audio through the microphone on the phone and cuts out that whirring drone noise when you're talking, which is pretty smart. So yeah, it's a versatile little guy. Pro tip, when you're trying to shoot video, the first thing you should try to do is turn down the sharpness of the video. It's super turned up all the way. Not sure why DJI did that, but if you want better quality, turn that down before getting serious about shooting some footage. Yeah. Okay, so it's nice and cheap, but there are downsides. Starting with the weight. Because it only weighs 135 grams, it is susceptible to strong winds. Uh, enough to crash it into a tree or just 
blow it away completely. If the wind is going in your direction strong enough, you can throw it all, the, all you want. The drone will just stand right there and, and fly in the opposite direction. So something to worry about. But even if it does crash because of that weight, chances it's going to take a lot of damage is, is pretty minimal because it's super light and it's plastic propeller guard that works. But if it does crash into water, yeah, water will ingress and water doesn't care about your weight. It'll damage your drone. Also, in direction track mode, if you go too fast, the drone will switch to follow mode because you know, it's happy. It doesn't want to fly too fast backwards because you could back it into a tree or a wall because there are no sensors at the back of the drone. But you are paying less than 200 bucks for this, so they have to cut costs somewhere, I guess. Bottom line, I think for 180 USD, it's a cool drone for most people. Trying to get into flying a drone or get cinematic shots, this might be the way to do it without spending too much. And if you do eventually decide you want to try FPV sometime in the future, then you'll have to think of buying those goggles, which cost a pretty penny. Other than that, it's pretty solid. And that's my time. Don't forget to like and subscribe. We really appreciate your support on the channel. I will see you guys in the next one. Take care.